Hello everyone, my name is Paul, and today I'm going to do a review of an AmpViz 6 megapixel security camera. This particular camera is PoE powered, uh, but if you don't have an, a PoE Ethernet switch or a means or a PoE injector or a means of providing power over the Ethernet segment cable to power the camera, it does come with an external uh, power adapter on its pigtail. So. You can always look that up on the AmpViz website or reach out to them and get the uh, the model number for their external power supply if you need to run it that way. But for the sake of convenience, if you're going to run more than a couple cameras, uh, highly recommend getting yourself a small PoE powered Ethernet switch uh, to make things convenient for you. Uh, make, will make your life a uh, whole lot more uh, stress free than trying to find a way to uh, plug in the power into the pigtail. So I purchased this camera on Amazon. Um, I'm not entirely uh, a super fan of bullet cameras, um, but this one uh, kind of intrigued me because of its AI capabilities and its color night vision. Um, so let's take a look at the camera. Uh, what I want to point out right out of the gate is um, the model number. On the Amazon website, I ordered model number IPC B863WD-S. What I got was model number IPC 860 w dash st so that's not an 863 clearly so i emailed amp viz support and i said hey i ordered uh you know this is the part number on amazon and this is what i got and sent them you know screenshots of each and the response i got was um due to some management decision or something like that the 863 was renamed the, to the 860 and it's the same camera that's what it told me so um i'll just say that you know the specs on the amazon website do match the specs in the camera so you know the only beef i have with that is if it's not the same if it's the same camera with a new model number then update the website or update your listing on Amazon. Don't leave it to people to wonder whether or not you shortchanged them on a camera. So um, I, I urge AmpViz to fix that. So looking at the camera, it's your typical bullet camera. Um, 2.8 millimeter lens. One of these is a white LED, the other one's infrared. White LED for night vision color uh, captures. The metal housing, or the housing for the camera is metal. The base is metal. Um, the nice thing about this uh, this particular um, housing or mounting uh, assembly is the um, Articulation, it's a uh, six-way articulation. So you have your typical 90 degree up and down for your uh, for, for the camera. You have a tilt capability, meaning once it's mounted, you have the ability to uh, tilt the angle of the camera, and um, it is a, it has a left to right articulation. So once you mount the camera, you can. Um, you know, if it were mounted in such a way, you can you do have a left to right along with a tilt and an up and down. So uh, three mounting screws on the base and the pigtail. There is a notch out for the um, mounting plate. So if you don't have a hole bored through the wall to which where you're mounting this, you do have the means of uh, just fishing the pigtail through its the built in notch out. Now, also in the box, uh, one to, one more thing to mention about the base has a rubber footing. Um, 
obviously I think uh, you know clearly that's for you know vibration dampening um, and for uh, better yeah, mounting and you know fastening of the uh, of the uh, mounting plate to keep the camera in place and prevent it from uh, shaking or moving. Now what else do we have in the in the in the box? Three mounting uh, Phillips head screws with plastic inserts for concrete, brick, mortar, what have you. A black um, Ethernet cable insulator uh, to uh, keep the RJ45 connector weatherproof. Uh, keep it, you know, the elements from getting in to the pins of the RJ45 connector. We have the um, user guide, uh, the setup guide. Again, uh, this particular guide talks about using the uh, AmpViz app to set up the camera. The camera does respond or has a built-in um, web engine. So from your typical um, web browser, you can get to the camera and run your setup or your configuration directly from the camera um, in addition to the app. Some kind of little sticker here. You can't see it very well, but it's just a round sticker. I'm assuming that's, uh, yeah, I can see the cutouts. So this is your template, your mounting template. Um, this would help you identify the location in which you want to mount the camera and the sizes of the holes, the size of the base, and the size that, of the pass-through hole if you're going to bore a hole through the wall of uh, wherever it might be to run the Ethernet cable. So you got that. This is the instructions for the waterproof lid, uh, weatherproof lid uh, to keep the elements, again, as I mentioned, out of the IJ45. After sales service, met problems, contact us immediately. So um, they give you the, the website, Amphibus Security, the email, and a f internet, well, I guess that's a phone number, 0086. So for those of you in the US, uh, I'm pretty sure that it'll be um, 01186, so on. Uh, 18 month replacement lifetime warranty, and so on. And um, big warning video surveillance amp viz security sticker. So you can put that on your window or garage door, whatever it is. Okay, so that's the box. Um, what we can do right now is I'm just going to pause this and we'll set up. We'll put the camera on my network and we'll log into its built in web browser or its web engine and um, look at the set, quick setup. Okay, so after a little bit of discovery, my the IP address of my camera is 10.31.0.110. The camera is defaulted from the factory for a login name of admin, all lowercase, and a password of 123456. So once you're in there, the camera will um, automatically show you its main stream at its default resolution. You know, everything's factory, so you don't have anything, you know, the date's going to be off and things like that. The app itself will correct this uh, if you've set the app to your local time zone. I believe it will uh, auto-correct the cameras to display the the correct date and time. But if you're going to run this camera on a network, you'll want to change the configuration of the camera manually by logging into its web engine and going to configuration here on the top of the screen. Right out of the gate, it will place you in the image controls where you can change things such as brightness, the contrast, um, advanced imaging and smart light control, all set here. I'm not going to go over all this in detail. You can download the help guides and um, user manual from the AmpViz website to help you with all that. Then we can go over to the video settings. Oh, the one thing I do want to show you is the on-screen display. The camera does allow you to put up different um, bits of information on different portions of the screen. For example, up here in the top left, we have the word camera and the date and time in the bottom right. It's all controllable by the on-screen display settings. But going now to the video settings, um, we have the main stream, 
and a substream. And um, the mainstream both and both substream are set to enable. The video compression used by uh, both is H.265. And the video compression is a means of compressing um, the packets such that, uh, or the information in the packet, such that it can be decompressed by your smartphone app or Blue Iris, if that's what you're going to run, or some other security software. I don't use the compression. I leave it, or I change it to 264. The reading that I've done, uh, I think, I believe what I'm told is 264 is an uncompressed video stream. That way you're not taxing CPU on your camera server to decompress the video as it gets um, captured by the um, camera software. Then you have your resolution. 3072 by 2048, I assume is six megapixels. And then you have a setting for five megapixels. Uh, 2560 by 1440, 2304, 1296, and then 1080p. Everything I do is 1080p, it's all I need. Um, but we're gonna find out if the field of view on this camera is subject to the resolution. On some cameras, they offer a field of view, they'll claim 120, seven degrees or 120 degree field of view, whatever it may be, but you only get that if you're set for your highest resolution. So uh, right now I'm gonna set for 1080p. Actually, you know what we can do? We'll see if with a full six megapixel resolution, we're, we're looking at most of the box on the, on the little display table along with the edge of my chair. So if we drop that down to 1080p and we hit save, Let's see what that gives us. Go back to the live setting. Okay, I don't think anything's changed. We still, you know, we're at 1080p and we still see, see the same uh, field of view. So that's good. Um, I hate it when, um, you know, you have to keep a, the highest resolution going in order to get the full field of view. So, so um, I like that. So we've got some potential there that um, when we put this camera up outside and I show you that, that, um, you know, that field of view will stay the same no matter what your resolution setting is. Now, for my purposes, I don't need a, a frame rate. Is basically how many frames or how many pictures per second will the camera take to create a video stream. 25 is great. I think you, at 1080p, you can go 30. Uh, at its full resolution, you're capped at 25. It's not, I don't think you will notice between 25 and 30 frames per second, but for those of you that can detect that, that's pretty good. Um, you've got good visual uh, acuity if you can do that. So 1080p by 15 frames per second is what I like. At 15 frames per second, the video stream seems to be smooth and uh, not as choppy as you would. You clearly could detect at 10 frames or even 5 frames per second. 15 is it smooth enough for me? So if for those of you that really like smooth video, then pump it up to 25 or 30 and uh, you're good to go. Constant bit rate is what I set for. Um, if you're setting for 15 frames per second, uh, I don't honestly know how the, the bit rate, bit, whether it's con uh, constant or variable plays a role. I don't, I always set for constant. So there may be an advantage to, to a variable. Somebody would have to educate me. Uh, the video quality itself can be worse, low, good, better, best. Um, so if you set for best, it's going to put in a um, a bandwidth throughput rate of uh, 8 meg, 8,192 kilobits per second. Uh, so if you drop that down to like say just good video stream, it's changed. It's dropping your uh, throughput down to uh, two and a half meg. Um, so you know, I don't. If you're running, if you've got a decent network at home, you know everything. You know, LAN segments are all good, and you know if you've got a good Ethernet switch, if you've got one, 
a, a good router, you know, with Ethernet ports on the back, whatever it may be. If you know, if you've got a decent system, there's no reason you can't just run uh, best quality. So I usually myself, I usually stick around um, the the, um, the 48, uh, four, you know, 4.8 megabit or 4,800K uh, bandwidth. All my cameras run about that. And um, I can't tell you what the frame interval actually does. Uh, you'd have to look it up, you know, Google it. And, but what I've been told when I watch, uh, you know, videos on how to maximize CPU utilization, um, a, lot of, a lot of those people who are smarter than I am always tell you that if your frame rate's 15 frames per second, set your frame interval to 15. So I do. And I'll save that. And with that being saved, the way I, oops, missed H264, save that. And it messed with my, that, better, good, better, best. Yeah, so at 264, I'm up to 9.2 meg uh, for throughput. Anyway, I'll drop that back down to better, which six meg and good is three. So let's stick with better and I'll save that. Okay. So now I've got my, my video settings the way I want it. And honestly, substream versus mainstream, the substream gives you the opportunity to, um, drop your, you know, your video environment down to such that you can save on bandwidth or you can save on utilization on a system such as blue iris. Um, I don't use it, so I disable the substream myself, so I not, I don't have that extra network traffic bouncing around. So anyway, I turn it off. Audio, you don't really necessarily have to change this unless you don't want to use G711. They do offer AEC and G711A. Um, so just leave it, the sample rate and the bit rate you can leave. Looks like there's only one setting for the bit rate anyway. So uh, the volume controls you can play with input uh, volume control and the output volume control. This camera does not have a, a speaker. You can't talk over it. So uh, they just didn't turn off in the GUI. They didn't turn off the uh, output volume. So anyway, it, well, no, no matter what you do with the output volume, it's not going to change because you don't have a speaker. And then there are other settings such as date and time, right? So let's, uh, we can use an NTP if you want to set up an NTP, but my cameras are blocked from getting on the internet through my router. So I either change it manually or I do a PC sync and come up with the correct time of day. Um, June 18th, 2023 at four o'clock even. Um, doesn't look like you could change that for military time. So anyway, so it's on a 24 hour clock. Let's save it and see what it represents on the screen. Yeah. So it shows you 1600 hours. So let's see, I can enable DST, but that doesn't change that. Um, anyway, um, that's pretty much all you're going to need, really, if you're going to manually monitor this camera through a web browser or through a network uh, application such as Blue Iris. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to stop here, and I'm going to go put this camera outside. It's 4 o'clock in the afternoon, so you're not going to get in. It's been overcast all day, so we're not going to get a nice, bright, sunny environment. But um, I think tonight what I'll do is I'll grab some nighttime video, and then tomorrow during the day, when if hopefully it's nicer, I'll uh, grab the daytime video and we'll put it on this and uh, give you a, an idea of what the camera looks like. All right, I'm back. It's the uh, following day, actually, from the previous uh, clip. And you're looking at a live shot from my Blue Iris camera server with the new uh, AmpViz camera uh, selected. And uh, let me switch over to a screen capture of 
my previous uh, front walkway camera. Uh, let's see, where was it? Right here. Uh, so that's uh, actually earlier in the week on the 16th. Um, and I grabbed that one only because the sun's out. But um, while this camera seems to be working well, you know, the original one, which was there, there which was another amp viz camera. Um, the new bullet one seems to be much more um, crisp. Uh, there's a chipmunk again. It's been climbing up into the bird feeder. And um, so it's much more crisp than the uh, previous amp viz camera. You know, the blades of grass seem to be just a little bit more pronounced. The stones in the front walkway um, seem to be a little clearer. You know, will it make that, you know, much of a difference? I don't know. I mean, it's nice to look at. Um, what I did lose on this bullet camera is a little bit of uh, field of view. The degree is, of field of view is clearly not the same as the original amp viz camera. It does uh, look to be a little narrower. The up and down adjustment on my on the new amp viz camera is in about the same position as the, the uh, previous one. Uh, I am a little bit to the left. If, uh, if we were to count bricks, um, six bricks in on the left hand side of the screen, whereas on the screen capture, I'm only like five. So I've lost a little bit of field of view and it's not that big of a deal because honestly, you know, if you're looking at the right hand side, my field, my vision is blocked by the uh, front overhang pillar anyway. So it's not like I've really lost a lot. Um, what I did gain is the microphone. My previous camera in the front walkway did not have a microphone, so I couldn't pick up any audio. Uh, this one, I'm picking up audio just nicely. Um, matter of fact, I was listening to a conversation uh, at the next door neighbors. They were, you know, talking at a regular volume. I increased the amplification a little bit and I could hear the conversation just fine. Um, not that I have any intent on on eavesdropping on the neighbors, but using that as a gauge for the microphone sensitivity, it uh, did quite well to my surprise. I was actually listening to all the birds going at it. Um, I could hear the neighbors talking. So it should be easily to detect a car or any other vehicle or maybe somebody talking right in front of your door. So um, the microphone did very well. So what I'll do tonight is I'll grab some uh, evening shots, um, show you the uh, the field of view and the um, resolution when uh, the camera's in night mode with the infrared LEDs on. And then uh, we'll do a kind of, of a summary and um, open it up for questions if you have any of me. So uh, tonight I'll get some, some additional footage for you. All right, so we're back. Um, it's actually nighttime, but before we look into that, I wanted to show you just a couple cam uh, pictures of the cameras. Uh, uh, camera, amp, amp viz. Uh, camera. Uh, this is um, mounted at my front door up in the corner pointed down towards the door and down towards the front walkway. Um, that's from a little bit further back. Um, as you can see, real, not really noticeable. You'd have to go looking for it. Um, You'd have to kind of look around to see if that, in fact, was a camera. So it's actually got a smaller footprint than I expected, which um, certainly is welcome. Uh, but I guess, you know, some of the thinking is that if your cameras are visible, people can spot them, then it's more of a deterrent. So I um, guess you can look at it both ways. And then uh, more of a close-up of the camera. As you can see, I mentioned earlier that there's a little way, if you don't have a whole board through the, you know, through the 
bulkhead that you've um, fastened to. In this case, uh, my overhead uh, drop ceiling outside um, ceiling on the overhang. Um, I run the pigtail out of the base of the camera and into a hole in the side molding. And that's where I run my Ethernet cable. So, um, so I have to take advantage of that little cutout on the side of the mounting bracket. So that's why it's there. It's convenient. Um, so those are uh, some of the shots from the camera being mounted. And as promised, here is the camera in night vision uh, using its infrared. And it's actually not half bad. Um, it's actually lit up pretty well. So um, can, you know, I'm sure if we saw somebody walking up the walkway, they'd be illuminated pretty well. Um, you got this light over here. This is my uh, my other amp viz that's mounted on the garage facing down the driveway. So you're picking up the infrared LED from that camera. And we've got some illumination coming from this direction because there's a street lamp over there and the neighbor's lights are on. And over in the distance, another neighbor's uh, outside light is on. So all in all, I'd say this is a, a pretty good, uh, pretty good illumination off of this camera should be able to see most everything pretty well any animals or anybody walking across in the street should be able to pick up pretty easily um, what I want to do is kind of get into the camera and turn on the color well, let's see if we can do that let's see if we can get into the camera get my in. security cameras and let's see yeah, let's get into the cameras configuration and we'll go to uh, video. And let's see. Where did they put this information for the night vision? Uh, let's see. Advanced image and smart LED light control, light mode, smart dual light, pure infrared, pure white. So let's turn the pure white on. And save that. Let's see if that uh, fires up the light on the camera. Let's go back to security cameras. I wonder if the camera's doing a reboot. Didn't say anything, but uh, my blue iris isn't uh, getting a response out of the camera now. So let's see what happens. Attempting to reconnect. No signal. Oh, there it is. All right. So the uh, as you can see, we've got some glare going on here. Um, but the camera's turned on. It's um, full white light and giving us uh, night illumination. So not bad. It looks pretty good. Uh, see the green grass, the walkway, the brick. Um, and off in the distance, you'd still be able to make out people walking by, cars driving by. So that doesn't look too bad. I think that's pretty good for, for the full illumination. Let's go back to the other camera. Or go back to the camera setting. Uh, let's see. Smart dual light. Um, what else we got LED brightness at 100% control mode automatic light on illumination so various settings light off sensitivity so I bet you if we go back nope I didn't save it that's why all right gonna hit save save successful and I bet you yeah camera is gonna reboot or uh, at least interrupt its uh, media stream and we'll go back to uh, infrared. As soon as the camera decides to resend a stream.
There it is. So, not bad. I'd say overall it's pretty good uh, illumination. Image pickup for night mode. So, um, I'll uh, end this clip here and then we'll do a uh, brief recap and uh, give you some of my thoughts, uh, final thoughts on the camera. And um, so we'll pick that up in the next uh, recording. All right, so to wrap up this uh, review, so in summary, I like this camera. It, uh, I like the, uh, the video quality of the uh, stream, uh, at, especially at 1080p. Uh, it does better than uh, a lot of cameras uh, that I've seen uh, at 1080p. So I, 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 I was surprised by that, how, um, you know, how good that uh, the video quality was. And I like the mounting base and the uh, articulating bracket for the camera. It's, it's a six-way, uh, gives you all directions after you mount the camera. So um, that is definitely a plus. And at the price point of $62.99, um, this is a good good value for this camera. Uh, so if I needed another one, I'd definitely buy this one. Because um, that is a good price uh, for a camera that uh, has the features that it has and its uh, overall performance. Some of the, um, probably the on the negative side, would be the field of view. I, you know, they probably could have done better with this. I don't know if it requires a new lens or what have you, but the, the field of view could have been a little bit, a uh, little bit better. But if that, uh, you know, if you're looking at it kind of a narrow focus, uh, then the camera's fine. It, uh, it's not that much of a takeaway from any other camera and the average field of view that most cameras use out there. So um, overall, I like the camera. Definitely like the um, the nighttime color illumination of the camera. Um, that was uh, a um, a nice surprise at how well that did. So I'd buy another one, um, and I recommend this for other users. I thought it was a, a good camera at a good price point. So um, you know, if there are any comments, uh, you know, or uh, you know, any. Uh, any remarks on this video? I don't take offense, so if, uh, if there are suggestions on the quality of the video or my content, let me know. Um, other than that, uh, thank you for watching and um, have a great day.